Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this is the week before Mayweather, Pacquiao, Pacquiao, Mayweather, however you see that fight. But understand, there's a group, and I'm a member of this group, who firmly believes that in boxing, there's the heavyweight championship, and then there's everything else. I'm not here trying to pretend that I'm fair or even rational about it. But to me, the man who wears the heavyweight title is the man, right? Then there's everyone else. If we had no weight classes, if this was just a free-for-all and you were to ask me who would be the champion, the champion, I would say it's the man who wears the heavyweight title, right? It would be the heavyweight championship. Now, whatever your girlfriend is telling you, just understand there are many who believe that size matters, right? I'll just say, put another way. Roy Jones, a generation ago, was the best fighter in the sport pound for pound. Tremendous talent. But that wasn't good enough, right? He understood that if he was going to cement his legacy, right, he needed to climb multiple weight classes to fight for the heavyweight championship, right? Understand, Jones wasn't a natural heavyweight. He was a guy who had to gain weight to fight for the heavyweight title. This isn't James Tony, right? Jones felt unfulfilled until he did. Many would argue that Jones's victory over John Ruiz is the best moment of his career. Take David Hay. David Hay at one point was the unified cruiserweight champion. He beat Enzo Macarinelli, right? The guy could have walked away from the sport and even critics would have said, look, you know, David Hay unified the cruiserweight title. It wasn't good enough, right? He was close to the heavyweight division. David Hay decided he would make a run at the heavyweight title. He actually beats Nikolai Valuev. And then, of course, not even that was good enough. He then fights Vladimir Klitschko in a unification match. So let's not kid ourselves. Just understand, there are many, and it includes fighters like Roy Jones and David Hay, who understand that not all titles are created equally. The baddest man on the planet is, depending on how you see it, either the world's fastest man or the heavyweight champion of the world, right? And that's Vladimir Klitschko. Let me say this too. In the post Lennox Lewis world of boxing, going back more than a decade, understand the best in the heavyweight division, depending on how you see it, is Klitschko, right? It's either Vitaly Klitschko, which I believe, or it's Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Understand, this isn't just a paper champion. This is a guy putting up defenses that have him in the category of Joe Lewis. Right? You're talking about a real heavyweight champion. Let me go one step further. I believe the only way to win the heavyweight championship, the only way, and we're talking about the real championship, is to beat Vladimir Klitschko. Right? With all due respect to Deontay Wilder, with all due respect to Bermain Stavern, and I give those guys a lot of credit, right? We all know that the heavyweight champion is Vladimir Klitschko. So, now let's talk about this fight. And let me just say this first. If you're a young heavyweight and you have people around you and you're hiring a manager, Right, and your dream is to win the heavyweight title, then you better hope that you have a manager like Brian Jennings' manager, James Prince. 
understand what James Prince, the hip hop mogul. Full disclosure, Prince is a friend of mine. I've represented him on some legal matters in California. Understand what James Prince did here. He not only delivered a heavyweight title fight to Brian Jennings, but he was able to deliver it against the heavyweight champion, a Ukrainian who usually fights in Germany. James Prince was able to have that fight here on the East Coast in the United States at the Mecca of Boxing, Madison Square Garden. Feels like New York around here, but right, understand, James Prince was able to deliver to his fighter a heavyweight title shot right in the United States in Madison Square Garden. It was all laid out for Brian Jennings. Right? The moment was here. The setting was here. It was all spelled out. Then Vladimir Klitschko entered the ring. And let me just say, I understand and I've read reports, I've read the Daily Mail article on this and a bunch of other uh, reports on this. I'm just here to tell you that Vladimir Klitschko at 39 is at the top of his game. I'm telling you that this Vladimir Klitschko, in my opinion, beats the Vladimir Klitschko from 10 years ago, right? The first four rounds, to me, are breathtaking, right? Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather would do lucky to fight 90% as well as Vladimir Klitschko does over the first four rounds. You have a consensus heavyweight champion. He's in the ring with a knockout punch. He's on his front foot. He's methodically cutting off the ring. The difference between young Vladimir Klitschko and older Vladimir Klitschko is he's less robotic now, right? He's not hiding behind a high guard. He's not throwing a lot of wasted jabs. And let's be clear about his jab. His jab is one of the best jabs in boxing history, right? If you're like me and you're a fan of, let's say, Larry Holmes' jab, understand Vladimir Klitschko has that level of jab. But now Vladimir Klitschko, this is the post-Tony Thompson rematch Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko is trusting his instincts a lot more. He has a little routine where he drops his hand, drops his left, and just dangles his shoulder while framing a right hand, right? He can throw power shots out the gate. He doesn't need the jab to touch you first anymore, right? And, of course, we know he has a great left hook. Now, I'm reading reports where people are questioning Vladimir Klitschko's punching power. Folks, one fight ago, he destroyed unbeaten Kubrat Pulev. The punching power is there. The aggression is amped up. Understand, if Sonny Liston had foot speed, bigger size, and better athleticism, he'd be Vladimir Klitschko. Right? This is a better fighter than Sonny Liston in his prime. So Vladimir Klitschko comes out the first four rounds against a 6'3 opponent. Let's be clear. He's not fighting a 5'11 guy. He's not fighting a 5'10 guy. He's fighting a 6'3 opponent. He looks physically much bigger than his opponent. He's like 6'6. It felt like a big man chasing down a little man. Right? Vladimir Klitsch goes on his front foot. You're noticing Brian Jennings is taking a grand tour of the ring. He's on the outside. There's no question who the aggressor is. There's no question where the eminent threat lies. It's with Vladimir Klitschko. You sense the power of his right hand even when he's not throwing it. Now, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to take a man's title... You need to take it, right? You cannot take the heavyweight championship. You can't burglarize that house by climbing in a window. 
right? If you're going to beat the champ, you need to come in the front door, right? You need to have some skill set where it's obvious to people watching the fight early that this is a serious threat to the title. This is a serious challenge to the throne. I didn't see that here from Brian Jennings. I didn't. Right, Brian Jennings comes in, he's the man being pursued. There's no line in the sand. I felt Brian Jennings is trying to survive, right? When you're surviving against the heavyweight champion, great. You're not taking his title, right? Now, the great Rocky Marciano had a fight philosophy where he thought when a guy has his hands up, you should hit the guy here. You should hit the guy wherever you can. You should hit the guy in the bicep. The idea is you destroy the muscle, you destroy the punch in that arm. Right? Rocky Marciano wasn't standing around waiting for perfection. He was trying to chop down a big tree, a big opponent. Right? Brian Jennings, in my opinion, is too careful here. Right? He's moving around later in the fight. He has his hands up like this. I believe you'd have to be more aggressive. You'd have to throw punches. They could be blocked. But you'd have to throw big punches on Vladimir Klitschko just to wake up the crowd, wake up the judges, have the judges understand you're not here to survive. You're here to thrive. You're here to win. Now, what I saw was Brian Jennings trying to pick his spots. He's outside, he's dancing around, a lot of lateral movement, right? He's trying to pick his spots. You know what? Too much survival. Not enough of a challenge. I didn't give Brian Jennings a round in this fight until the sixth round. I didn't feel watching this fight. And this was a fight where a guy was taking a title. Now it was a little jarring because just a few days ago, I saw Badu Jack, right, lift the super middleweight title from Anthony Durrell. Now that fight by the sixth round, you sensed something was happening. That fight by the sixth round, you actually sensed that the challenger was there to take the title. That the champ was going to have to defend the title. Badu Jack incredibly in that fight. We'll talk about it at a different time. But Badu Jack's on his front foot against a much heavier handed Anthony Durrell. He's taking the fight to Durrell. He's not outside, moving away, not engaging. Right? Now, you can do that when you're someone charismatic in the ring like Ali. And when the other guy misses... You jump in and you're throwing combinations, right? Sonny Liston's eye gets banged up, right? Liston's getting hit with something. You can't do that if you're Brian Jennings and you're jumping in and you're getting smothered, right? Vladimir Klitschko isn't cut up. Vladimir Klitschko doesn't even have any redness. You never get the feeling Vladimir Klitschko is in any big danger, right? Now let's just talk mechanics for a second. This is something I firmly believe, right? Just picture a clock, right? Let's say I'm the champ. Let's say I'm Vladimir Klitschko. Put me at six o'clock on the clock. That's my position, six o'clock. If you're directly across from me, we'll call that 12 o'clock. Right? I don't believe you can beat a guy with a good jab by covering up at 12 o'clock. If you're going to beat Vladimir Klitschko, angles have to be involved, don't they? In my opinion, you have to come in at either 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock. Right? In other words, if I'm Vladimir Klitschko, you have to be over here on the other side of my jab. Right? Or you have to be over here, daring to smother my right hand. Right? 
I believe if you're really skilled at it, you need to be at 9.30 or 2.30, or dare I say even 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock if you're fighting Vladimir Klitschko. But you're not going to beat a guy with a jab from 12 o'clock. You're just not, right? Because Vladimir Klitschko, when you stand right in front of him, is going to hit you with the jab. Now, there are moments in this fight where, you know, in the um, seventh round, for example, Brian Jennings is on the ropes and he's moving side to side. And Klitschko can't quite time his jab. Klitschko tries to hit him, but Jennings has too much lateral movement. You know, that works if the lateral movement is coupled with some lunging punches, right? If, if Brian Jennings is hitting Vladimir Klitschko back, then that would work. But when a guy is at, you know, 12 o'clock, then he starts moving between 11 and 1, but isn't firing back big punches, on Vladimir Klitschko, in my opinion, even the seventh round goes to Klitschko. Right? You haven't done enough to take his title. So I credit Brian Jennings with going the distance. Right? This didn't feel like, let's say, Carlos Takim against Tony Thompson. A fight where you have a tall guy like Vladimir Klitschko and Tony Thompson with the jab. I understand Tony's a southpaw, but Carlos Tackham is off at the side. He's coming in at 10 o'clock. He's coming in at 9 o'clock, and he's throwing big punches, hooks and stuff like that. He's smothering Tony's left hand. He's making life miserable for Tony. That's the kind of fight that might work against Vladimir Klitschko for a shorter opponent. Right? There wasn't enough of that kind of action in this fight. It seemed to me that Ryan Jennings was trying to survive. Right, He's hoping for a home run, but he doesn't create enough chaos to allow one to happen. Right, Understand, there are holes in Vladimir Klitschko's game as good as he is. You're not going to see a lot of body shots in this. Right, You're not. You're going to notice. Right, as my cat, um, you know, noticed, you're going to notice that Vladimir Klitschko, you can avoid his jab. Right, if you move the right way, you can make it hard for him. You'll notice too that Vladimir Klitschko, when he starts jumping around on his toes, like the eighth round, for example, when he's up on his toes, he's not throwing big punches back. Right, he's not a guy who looks like he operates well on his back foot. Right? His clinches look predictable to me. Right? He's not a guy who fights small well, although he can fight small when you're at distance. Right? The point, though, is you've got to create disorder when you're dealing with a guy who's such a jab, right hand, no body punch, cushion between the two fighters type of fighter. Brian Jennings didn't introduce enough disorder. When they go to his corner, you're going to hear his cornerman, Jonathan Banks, bluntly say, it's later in this fight, like after the 7th or 8th round, he says, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You just need to continue to box him, right? In other words, don't get caught up in anything else. You can just do your plan A and win the fight. Now, let me say this. Vladimir Klitschko is talking about fighting Tyson Fury next, right? I believe, and I've said so here online, that Tyson Fury beats him, right? I believe Tyson Fury poses a different dynamic. Height-wise, you can't tuck Tyson Fury under your underarm like Klitschko did to Brian Jennings and countless others, right? Tyson Fury is a switch. Um, he's... A guy who is seamless in terms of switching from a left lead jab to a right lead jab, righty to lefty, right? I believe that's going to create problems. I believe Tyson Fury can duplicate what Tony Thompson did successfully, 
in their first fight. I also believe Tyson Fury can fight inside and can lean on guys, right? A bit more easily than Brian Jennings can. Just look at Tyson Fury leaning all over Steve Cunningham. Right, count me among those who believes a Tyson Fury Vladimir Klitschko fight is going to be the sport on the highest level. A real challenge to the heavyweight title. Let me just say this I would expect the first four rounds of Fury against Klitschko to be much more contentious than these first four rounds. I could tell Brian Jennings trained hard for this fight, I could tell that he was physically prepared for this fight. He was ready to go the full 12 rounds. What he wasn't ready to do was to challenge for the title. At times, he looks a bit like Eris Landy Lara to me. He's outside of the pocket. He didn't look close enough to be a threat to Klitschko. Right? Klitschko seems to be the one cutting off the ring. There doesn't seem to be a guy on the other end who's willing to say to him, okay, look, you're cutting off the ring, I'm here, I'm going to throw on you, right? Jennings, long reach, didn't know how to use that reach, like an Ali would, where, you know, as Klitschko's trying to cut off the ring, he's getting hit with jabs, he's getting hit with counters, he understands he can't fearlessly be front foot because things are coming back, bullets are two-way. Right? It seemed to me that Jennings was at his best when he created some chaos and then he would lunge in with the lead power shot. The problem, though, is he would hit Klitschko with a lunge and then wouldn't set up roots right in front of Klitschko to finish it off. Right? Obviously, there's some dynamic I must be missing. I don't understand how guys bum rush Klitschko and Klitschko is able to just tuck them under a forearm and go like this, right? Why isn't the guy bending lower? I can't imagine a guy tucking Mike Tyson under a forearm and not expecting Tyson to then bend his knees and go to work on his rib cage, right? I don't understand how a shorter guy can be trying to get inside on Vladimir Klitschko and not lunge in and try to throw uppercuts. Wasn't an uppercut a big part of Mike Tyson's, you know, game? You know, how easy was it, really, to tie up Joe Frazier? I know Ali does it illegally in the second fight. Ali couldn't tie up Joe Frazier in a thrill in Manila on a regular basis. Why is it Vladimir Klitschko is able to tie up Brian Jennings as often as he is? Right? Why isn't Brian Jennings coming in at 930 with hooks and stuff like that from the side? How come this fight is fought so politely? with so much deference to Vladimir Klitschko, right? I'm expecting a more rough and tumble affair from Tyson Fury. I'll say this. I don't believe Deontay Wilder is ready for Vladimir Klitschko. If that fight gets announced, I'll be, you know, on here making a video predicting a knockout. But Tyson Fury, I think that's going to be a little bit different, right? I think Tyson Fury right now has the size and knows how to get Klitschko out of his comfort zone. Keep the pressure on Klitschko. Force Klitschko to think. Not be moving away from Klitschko, but staying around the pocket. So Klitschko understands he's vulnerable to counters, that you're close enough to throw counters. I think that's the dynamic we're going to see in that fight. So put me among those who applauds Brian Jennings. For being able to go the distance with Vladimir Klitschko, I think both guys are major class acts. I did not feel in the later rounds of this fight that the scoring mattered, right? I thought Vladimir Klitschko by at least the ninth round had already won the fight, right? Um, you know, the only question was whether Brian Jennings was going to get a knockout, and Jennings didn't push the issue enough to do so. Right? Too much movement. Not enough punches, not enough closeness to throw counters. Right? Not enough of a challenge to the heavyweight throne. 
That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.